The services for 18-year-old Randy Henson were crowded with his teenage friends, and his friends' thoughts were crowded with bad feelings for the Norman police. Henson was shot and killed after being arrested in the Norman residence for burglary. According to police, he was shot while trying to escape. The officer involved has been cleared by the district attorney's office, but the bad blood persisted in the funeral procession. County deputies were used to direct traffic instead of the city police. When the procession passed by, some of the teenagers yelled obscenities at Norman Police Headquarters. An unidentified cameraman recorded the whole thing from across the street. Henson's burial marks the Knowing first time in about five years that anyone has been God. shot by a Norman police Nothing officer. Nothing in the past. Did... Norman Police Chief Don Hollyfield would not comment on camera for us today. However, he did say that he believes the facts surrounding the Henson case speak for themselves. Henson was under arrest as a felon, and he tried to escape and was shot in the attempt. Ted Brown, Action 4 in Norman. Homes, even new homes, have a common problem. They could be more energy efficient. And finding out just what the customer can do to cut down on energy use is Harold Kelly's job. As part of a new program, OG&E's Kelly travels around Oklahoma City checking door moldings and 118 other points as part of the ECHO program. It stands for Energy Conservation Helps Oklahoma. The object is to help customers get the most out of their energy dollars. But why would a company that sells energy want people to conserve it? By them doing some of the things that we recommend, then we will uh, lower our demand on our system. And uh, therefore, we will be able to defer generation uh, till sometime in the future or, or maybe just eliminate it uh, completely. If demand is lowered, OG&E won't have to build another generating plant. That's why Kelly uses a computer with a telephone hookup to instantly analyze any home's energy efficiency. The computer also makes recommendations on improvements that will reduce electric bills. Anyone wanting an energy audit should call OG&E for an appointment. It costs $15. Ted Brown, Action 4. The guards at the state capitol and the flags at half-mast today were a memorial to a state narcotics officer who died in the line of duty. 29-year-old Bill Morgan and two McAllister police officers were killed Thursday when their plane crashed 
while searching for marijuana fields. Funerals for the two McAllister men were held yesterday. But today was the time for friends and co-workers to pay their respects to Bill Morgan's family and to pay silent homage and tribute to a comrade. He said, I've heard a lot about your outfit. I'd kind of like to join up with you. He said he could get the job done for us. Billy Morgan came up and said, I will go to the crest of the mountains and I will signal you when the way is clear and safe. I woke this morning from camp and caught a familiar reflection from the sky. And there on the crest was Billy. And he sent the signal back to us that the way is clear and safe. I say to you now, Billy, vayo con Dios, young scout. Most of the 47 local air traffic controllers assembled shortly before midnight last night at the AFL-CIO meeting hall in downtown Oklahoma City. The strike vote for the local union took a short time, but the impatient controllers had to sit around for several hours, waiting for the votes of West Coast union members to be tallied. Eighty percent of union members across the country had to approve the walkout before the union would give the go-ahead to strike. Oklahoma City controller union officials declined comment on their strike vote. A spokesman said no official statement would be released by the controllers until this afternoon after weary union members have had a chance to recuperate from their long vigil. Scott Wallace, Action 4, downtown Oklahoma City. vacating of office of anyone who pleads guilty. Uh, the, we will be recommending that there is a, an alleged as many as 100 who might be charged. Uh, we we you know, had 15 or so. A special session that met now would not have at their uh, grasp the complete overview of all the proceedings that would have happened. Uh, in these investigations. So I opted that uh, they come in session in January. Uh, we think we can handle any of the emergency situations that uh, exist. Oklahoma has some 85,000 miles of county roads. County commissioners are responsible for taking care of them. But in the wake of the county commissioner's kickback scandal, Senate President Marvin York wants the Transportation Department to assume the responsibility for the roads. He says this would eliminate the kickback problem and improve efficiency. But it could also pose problems for the state. The Transportation Department already is responsible for all other highways, and no one there knows what would happen if York has his way. A department official commented that although no one has ever considered such a plan, the department would gladly accept the road responsibility. The transfer suggestion came after an agreement to appoint a joint House-Senate committee to investigate county government. If the road responsibility is indeed transferred to the Transportation Department, there is speculation that county road standards could be upgraded. But that is just speculation, and for the time being, county roads will remain that, the business and responsibility of the county and its commissioners. Tony Stizza, Action 4, northwest of Edmond.
my main point there is that this is a public institution over across the street and that they should deal publicly, particularly with the community that, that they are surrounded by. But as a state institution, they should deal publicly. Their decision-making process should be opened up so that there's some scrutiny to it. Homicide units were kept busy for several hours near the archery range at Trosper Park this afternoon, trying to collect evidence to determine the circumstances surrounding the death of a young woman whose body was found there. There are a number of questions surrounding the death, such as identity, the cause of death, and how long the body had been in the park. A uh, man and his son came out here to the Trosper Park archery range shortly after one o'clock this afternoon. Uh, they found the body. It appears she's been here for several days. There's uh, no cause of death at this time. There is uh, uh, advanced stages of decomposition, and uh, the girl is nude. She's wearing a lot of jewelry, and we can't find any clothing here at the scene. Police definitely suspect foul play and are investigating several leads trying to identify the victim. But they are also asking for public help. The victim is described as a young black female who may have had a red tint to her hair. She also had a scar on her right thigh. If you have any information that might help the police identify the victim, give them a call at 231-2121. Charles Schnitzer, Action 4. There aren't many people left alive today who remember seeing Halley's Comet back in 1910. And if you're alive to see its next appearance in 1986, chances are you won't be by the time it comes around again. Although Halley's Comet has been buzzing Earth's skies every 76 years since 87 BC, it's still slightly less than a once in a lifetime event. People used to believe comets were bad news. They supposedly mark the coming of famines, plagues, and other nasty happenings. A little bit more is known about them today. Basically, a comet is just a, a large snowball, you might think of a dirty snowball. It's a couple miles in diameter, and it's made mostly of uh, frozen ices, water, uh, dry ice, things like that. It has some rocks and some dust in it. And these were made about four and a half billion years ago when the solar system formed. If you could travel away from the solar system until the sun becomes just another bright spot in the sky, you could see where comets come from. They envelop the planetary system in a cometary halo where most of them have stayed since before the planets formed. They occasionally drop into the solar system, and when that happens, the sun heats up some of the material, which boils off, creating a trail that sometimes stretches 10 million miles. Scientists at NASA and the Jet Propulsion Laboratories want to send a probe up to meet Halley's Comet, a probe much like the ones used on the Voyager missions to Jupiter and Saturn. Uh, if, as we believe, these comets were made four and a half billion years ago, they tell us what happened four and a half billion years ago when the solar system, the, the Earth, and the Sun, and all the other planets were formed. So we'd be looking back in time, four and a half billion years, back to the beginning of our solar system. And Halley's Comet has a lot of historical impact, there's a lot of historical information. And other comets would have other information, but we know a lot about Halley's Comet too. We know when it's coming. You can't always tell when a comet's coming. This one, you know when it's coming, so we can be prepared when it's here. The probe would have to be launched by the space shuttle in the summer of 1985 to intercept the comet about eight months later. It would actually fly into the comet, collecting dust particles and sending information as well as thousands of photographs back to Earth. The only problem is the project hasn't been approved. It would take about $300 million over the next five years to pull it off. President Reagan's budget director, David Stockman, has recommended the project be killed, but some are hoping he will change his mind in time to get the probe ready. He figured out to a one quarter per every person in the United States per year spread out over the next five years, and that doesn't sound like a lot of money. 
especially since, as I pointed out before, the, this comet comes around once every 76 years. This is the only chance in my lifetime, your lifetime, and most of the people's lifetime who are watching this to see Halley's Comet. And uh, $300 million sounds like a lot of money, but uh, spreading that over five years, it's really not very much money. Ted Brown, Action 4 on the OU campus. Liquor retailers have been busy lately. A viewer says, I was hurt in an automobile accident with another driver who had no insurance. It was his fault. Does my insurance company have to pay me anything or does it just fix my automobile? Well, if you had uninsured motorist coverage with medical pay provisions, then in addition to your property damage, you're entitled to receive from your company the amount of money that you would have received from the other driver had he had insurance. This would include lost wages, pain and suffering, and mental anguish. Many people either do not carry uninsured motorist coverage or carry a small amount. However, even with compulsory insurance laws in Oklahoma, the number of uninsured drivers continues to grow, and insurance protecting yourself from them is coverage well worth the expense. For Action 4, this is Ray Vaughn with Legal Briefs. A viewer writes in and says, how may I become informed concerning my husband's financial, personal, and real properties? He won't tell me anything about them or even discuss the matter with me. Well, if the properties in question are your husband's separate properties, such as property acquired prior to the marriage or by gift or by inheritance after the marriage, then a wife has no rights regarding them. A married man or woman has the right to acquire property in his or her own name and to dispose of it as they see fit subject to the general duty to provide for the support of the other spouse. If the property is jointly acquired marital property, then you do have certain rights, and the property can generally not be disposed of without your consent. Further, if you have signed with your husband on any loan or credit transaction, you are entitled to copies of those papers, and you may inquire of the local consumer reporting agency or credit bureau as to any credit reports that may affect you. For Action 4, this is Ray Vaughn with Legal Briefs. There was an optimistic crowd at Republican headquarters tonight. Fred Snyder and his campaign workers kept a close tally of the returns as they came in. It was apparent early in the evening that Snyder was going to win the special election by a wide margin. However, the candidate said he wouldn't claim victory until the last vote was counted. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, yes, sir. Boy, you're looking good right now. Uh, 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 <laughs> Despite that statement, he has made some decisions about his first acts in office. I have two things. Uh, one of the first things I'll do, of course, is to send a memorandum or a letter to each department of the county government that they will not make any purchases at Snyder Hardware in Edmond. If they do, they'll be held personally liable to pay it, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, the second thing that I intend, or generally at the same time, is to send a letter to each mayor 
and council in my district, in District 3, asking them for their priorities of roads and improvements that they need and tell them that I want to have an opportunity in, within a short period of time that we can sit down and discuss their priorities with them, see how it can be worked out, and get us a program started. Snyder says he believes he got the most votes tonight because of his long record of public service in Edmond and because of his reputation for honesty. And after all, he says, it was a question of honesty that made this special election necessary to begin with. Ted Brown, Action 4 from Republican Headquarters. Convicted killer Roger Dell Hayes will be back in this Logan County courtroom soon to face charges of killing nine-year-old Carrie Kendall. Hayes was recently granted a new trial because of a technicality, one that prosecutors are going to make sure doesn't happen again. After the guilty verdict was handed down, it was learned that one of the jurors participated in the search party for the missing Kendall girl. The first trial produced a guilty verdict with the evidence produced by the district attorney's office. There is another reason for a new trial. Along with the ineligible juror, Roger's sister-in-law, Thelma Hayes, is now saying a Satanistic cult is responsible for the murder of Carrie Kendall, who had been reported missing after she was sent to buy a newspaper. Since Hayes has been granted a new trial, preparations must be made. But prosecutors may appeal the retrial decision. At, uh, the next step is for Judge Wall to set a date for the trial. and. And uh, then if it's said and uh, proceeds, we'll put on our case again and let the jury decide what happens at the new trial. Uh, at this time, we are considering possibly an appeal of the judge's ruling. If, if that's possible, we're looking into that. Hayes, who was being kept in the Logan County Jail, allegedly dug one of the jail bars from the wall and briefly escaped last night. He was recaptured a short time later. Hayes is going to be charged with assaulting a trustee during his escape using his homemade digging tool. He talked with his attorney about why he tried to get away. And all that uh, he could tell me at that time was that he had no choice. Well, from the, the only explanation he made was that he, if he didn't, he would be killed or, or he would have to harm someone else. Besides being back in court for the Kerry Kendall murder, Roger Dell Hayes will face escape charges. In addition, another man will be charged for obstructing justice because he allegedly told police Hayes was running one way when actually Hayes was right around the corner. Officials think the man told them that to throw him off the track. So it appears Roger Dell Hayes will be in court for some time to come. Ed Stewart, Action 4 at the Logan County Courthouse. In a teacher termination situation, you're dealing with statutory grounds for termination, and most of which deal with a teacher's fitness to teach school. We intend to make sure that, uh, that if the school board is going to, to act in a manner that causes the loss of a job, that they're going to have evidence to back that up and that he will be afforded the full uh, amount of due process. Tenant tried to help a lady on the balcony extinguish the small fire when it started. He tried to gain access from the outside and uh, a, that guardrail gave away with him and he fell. He got some lacerations and bruises. I'm not sure to what extent he's injured. 